In this video, let me talk about three minor topics which I couldn't include in my previous activity logging video. First topic, in Unify Network application, in settings, yes, you enabled the SIM server exporting, you specified the remote SIM server IP address and port number. It seems everything's working. The system never reports any error, right? But in this testing I'm doing, see the left side, my Greylock server is completely down. I'm not talking about the service, I'm talking about the server itself. It's not powered on at all. Then why Ubiquiti cannot give you some error message warning you the syslog exporting is not really successful, right? So to understand and the reason in the lower part Wireshark, let me capture the packets between the Greylock server IP address, this particular one, and this lab environment's one part IP address. I'm running this testing in this green lab environment. So that's why whatever syslog this gateway is going to send out to the Greylock, it need to go through the one part. I'm using this Wireshark to capture the communication between this Greylock IP address and this UDM Pro one part IP address. So in Wireshark, let me use SSH remote capture. I specify the UDM Pro's IP address credentials. Then in capture, I use UDM Pro's interface Ethernet 9, which is the part 10, one part of this lab environment. I'm going to use TCP dump. And here, when it comes to filter, I filter on the two host. IP address. I only want to see the traffic between the Greylock server and UDM Pro. Okay, let me start capturing. Okay, see what's happening. You see the packets from the UDM Pro to the Greylock, even though the Greylock server is not powered on at this moment. Then why you don't see any error? Because the protocol is syslog. Let me click on a random one. You see UDP section here. So syslog is based on UDP by default. And that's what Ubiquiti used. In the lower right, let me SSH to UDM Pro. Let me go to etc syslog ng folder. Finally, go to config.d folder. Let me show you this remote configuration file. This is where the gray log setting is configured. So the IP address, this one, no problem. And the part 514, no problem. See the protocol. UDP, Unified Gateway uses UDP to communicate with the SIM server. Because it's UDP, it doesn't have a lot of advantages of TCP. For UDP, there's no handshake, no session state, and there's no built-in acknowledgement. So the sender, in my case, the UDM Pro, simply throw the packets on the wire and call it a day, even if the destination isn't listening. In my case, the server is even not on. The packets are simply dropped silently. Unlike TCP, UDP has no retransmission. It doesn't guarantee delivery and there's no built-in error notification to the application. Because of this, as we can see in Wireshark, the UDM Pro simply blindly sending all the syslogs to the IP address of Greylock. It even doesn't know everything was wasted. There's nothing received by the Greylock server. That's determined by the nature of UDP. Now you see the situation when the Greylock server is completely down. Right, let me start the Greylock server. And during the process, when the computer is on, but the Greylock service is not on, you will see an interesting special scenario. See, this is what I'm talking about. Once the OS for the server is up, the OS realized there's some UDP packets sent to this server, but there's no process listening on the part, which is 514, right? So what the server will do, the server will send out this type of ICMP packet back to the sender. And the ICMP packet will say destination unreachable part unreachable. Unfortunately, for this type of ICMP response, most applications, including Unify Gateway, they won't monitor it at all. 
So theoretically, if Unify Gateway receives this type of ICMP error, it can display some status, right? Apparently, Ubiquiti doesn't bother doing that. The reason is it will only cover the rare scenario, which is OS is up, but the SIM server is not up. Okay, I hope it's clear about this first minor topic. Let's move on. Next topic, let's explore this option, debug logs. It is referring to the severity field in standard syslog message. Let me show you a random captured syslog in Wireshark. For example, this one. See the syslog message details. There's a field, it's called level, and you can see for this particular syslog, a value is six, which means information. If we switch on this option, debug logs, the system is supposed to export those syslogs, which are marked as debug. Debug means it's very detailed, the finest granularity syslog. Normally, the system doesn't expose it to the end user. It's only for internal debugging purpose, right? That's understandable. On the screen, I show you the RFC 5424. It's for syslog, and it explains the severity field in syslog. Okay, it's here. There are eight predefined severity value or in Wireshark or even in Greylog, it's called a level, but it's referring to the same thing. So the debug logs in unified settings, meaning it will export all the logs, including seven, which is for debug. But in reality, unfortunately, it doesn't really work in that way. So in Wireshark, let me start a new capturing. This time, I don't need this previous filter. I can simply say part 514 started. And then in the display filter, let me say syslog level equals to 7. 7 means debug. Currently, in Unify network application settings, I don't have the debug logs enabled. That means I'm not supposed to see any syslogs whose levels equal to 7. Right, but let me do some access point activity on my cell phone. Let me connect to the Wi Fi for this lab environment. Okay, see, several syslogs were captured, and you can even tell from the info the level or severity is debug. What's going on? I don't have debug logs enabled. Why we see debug logs? To understand what happened, let me SSH to a AP and to the UDM Pro. Let's compare how the debug logs are implemented differently in the two different unified devices. So in the lower part two SSH sessions, in the right side one, let me SSH to UDM Pro. Then let me show you the syslog ng configuration. Show this SIM server related configuration file. So you can see this filter is for remote filter it decides what type of syslogs are exported. You can see it says level from infer to emergency. If you compare to the RFC documentation, you can see the current setting in UDM Pro, meaning from six to zero. So from the UDM Pro setting, that perfectly makes sense. We don't have any problem. However, if I go to the access point, TMP folder. So let me show you the configurations in the system config file, which are related to syslog. You can see this is the setting. So syslog enabled makes sense, and remote server makes sense, part makes sense. However, this level doesn't make sense. Compared to the RFC documentation, 7 means debug. Based on the current selection in Unify Network application, even without enabling debug logs, the AP is already sending the debug syslog to the SIM server. This answers why from Wireshark we did capture the debug syslogs from the AP when I tried to connect to the Wi-Fi. I believe Ubiquiti had made a mistake here. But to furtherly confirm my theory, in Unify Network Application, if I enable the debug logs, apply changes, then first, let's check what's the difference in the UDM Pro. Before enabling debug, we see from infer to emergency, right? Now let me quit the VI and then run it again. See, it's changed. Now the 
syslog level is from debug to emergency. This makes sense. It exactly reflects my setting about the debug logs on the UI. However, this time, if we go to the access point, let me rerun the previous command. See, what's the change? The syslog level equals to 8. The 8 number doesn't make sense already because according to syslog standard, there's no 8. Someone may argue maybe 8 means some custom severity level defined by ubiquity. Okay, even that's the case, it's still wrong, right? What I expect to see when I enable debug logs in Unify AP is this value is 7, even if the system does have severity value 8, it doesn't matter, right? It's just a simple logic. The AP can export the log, which has the severity equals to 7 or 8. But instead, the system set the severity level to 8 when I want to enable debug logs. And when I don't want to see debug logs, the AP export the level 7, which lead to all the noises in the syslogs which are debug syslogs, which I don't want to see. Just to summarize for this second topic, I believe Ubiquiti has issue in the non-gateway unified devices. By the way, I only show you AP as example, right? In fact, the same thing happens to switch as well. Okay, we are done with the second topic. More. The third topic is about a setting not for network. Instead, it's in the control plane. Under integrations, if I enable sim server, you see there is a include raw logs setting. If you read the information provided by Ubiquiti, it says the system will include unprocessed log data. Let's try to understand what this include raw logs is about. Before doing that, let's disable the network setting so that we won't see the noises in our testing. So let me set the activity logging to off. Then go back to control play. Let me enable sim server. For server address, let me provide gray log and the same part 514 apply changes. Then to understand what's going on in the network packets, let's start capturing. You can see it's very well required. Nothing's happening because we disabled the network syslog, right? And for the console's syslog, normally it's relatively quiet. You don't have a lot of logs. But if we want, we can send a test event. See, there is a packet captured. And if we try to see the details, you can see it is still based on UDP. The only difference if you compare to regular syslogs we saw in the network application is see the process ID, it says CEF. This is a new feature in Unified Gateway. It can export some syslogs in CEF format. So I will have a dedicated video to discuss CEF, but you can see even though it's called CEF message by nature, it is still syslog. You can see the exact same structure as regular syslog. Just the string, the message itself is organized slightly differently. You know what? I already enabled the include raw logs, but at least for this particular example, we don't see any raw logs. This is the only packet we receive, and in the message itself, it doesn't include any unprocessed log information. If you think it's mainly because this is a simple test event, right? Okay, let's simulate another syslog. For example, let me remove the VPN in the categories. I'm making a configuration change. Then let me apply changes. Then the console is supposed to send a syslog. Yes, it does send it. We can see a second syslog. The process ID is CF. And in the message details, you can see what happened. But again, for this non-test syslog, I still don't see any raw logs. My question is, what's the purpose of this raw logs? Just to compare the difference, if any, between enabling or disabling this include raw logs setting. You see two examples when I enabled raw logs, right? So now let me 
switch it off, apply changes. We can ignore the third syslog because that's simply due to I just made this change, right? But now the system is supposed not to send raw logs, right? Then let me repeat the two simulations I just did previously. So first send a test event. See, if you compare this one with the previous one, zero change, zero difference. So then let me make another configuration change. For example, I remove the update related categories, make changes. Okay, we receive a different one. Then if you compare this one with the previous example, you can see it's the same type of syslog. There's no any raw information. Let me try to resolve the puzzle. I guess what Ubiquiti really wanted to achieve by this setting is because for the control plane related activity logging, all the logs are in CEF format. So maybe Ubiquiti wants to send the regular plane syslog in parallel if you enable this raw logs. So that's my theory. Otherwise, I don't have explanation about what this setting is. No matter what's the purpose of this setting, Anyway, Ubiquiti hasn't implemented at all because no matter how I change this setting, I simply don't see any syslog changes. So the third topic is simple and short. This ends the video. Thanks for watching.